Genny Dietz is trapped in an underground metro station. He is but a humble repairman, armed with nothing but a dust mask, a ball-peen hammer and his trusty yellow hard hat. Kenny needs to find a way out of the tunnels, or die trying. The metal gates have thudded shut behind him. Sounds echo down the dead tunnels. He's stuck in here with potentially tens of thousands of zombies. Or are they stuck in here with him? How long can we survive in Project Underground, a massive metro system packed with insane zombies? This is Kenny's story. Okay, let's try and get our bearings. Kenny knows Emlyn Station fairly well, though it is darker than he's used to, and much quieter. He heads down the eerie corridors, finds some duct tape. Kenny's the kind of guy who duct tapes his kids into the back of the car. The guy just loves it. Nice and slowly. Kenny, nice and slowly. He makes his way to the locker room, hoping that some of his colleagues might have left something behind. He finds a suitcase, which he'll use to carry some of his loot, and takes a drink from the bathroom sink. The water, thankfully, is still on, but Kenny knows it would likely turn off soon. Kenny heads to the main station area, and the emergency tannoy is still playing. Who is talking? Who is that, Kenny? Oh. Attention all visitors and residents of Marshall Lowe. We regret to inform you that the Marshall Lowe Metro System's train lines are currently out of order. We urge the tannoy announces that anyone left alive should head to Key Station, the main terminal station, just one stop down the line. Kenny finds a scribbled note left behind by a member of station staff. We're all doomed. I'm going to try and make it to the service. Julie, I love you. He also finds a torch, which is going to be very useful in the dark tunnels, and a map of the Metro. There's a small convenience store where Kenny loads up his suitcase with chocolate and other snacks. It's enough to keep him going for now. He finds a crowbar in the back room. An amazing find. We'll have a granola bar and chill out in the shop for a moment, Kenny. He heads to the main station stairs, but the way out is blocked. No way out. You don't want to go out there anyway, Kenny. Safer down here, trust me. Maybe. We'll find out, won't we? Kenny pries open the door to the loading bay and checks out the other locker room. Nothing inside of any value or use. He then tries the other staircase but the top has been hurriedly blockaded and the top door is locked. No sunlight trickles through. Kenny is trapped. So there's only one way to go. Down. He heads towards the maintenance room overlooking the tracks but doesn't find much of any use. Kenny does however find a green key card used to open security doors in a certain part of the metro station. It could come in handy. No idea what the time is. Time has no meaning down here. Kenny will just sleep when he's tired I think. Kenny must go further down, down, deeper, into the tunnels, through this ominous door. In a large dumpster, he spies a single crawling cockroach, which he quickly scoops up. At least there is one other living creature in the tunnels with him. He puts it in his pocket and it squirms around. Kenny finds it strangely comforting. He heads further. It is oppressively dark. He fumbles for the hand torch and flicks it on. The cavernous empty train tunnel stretches out before him. A cold, stale wind blows down the tracks. Kenny edges slowly into the tunnel. Emlyn Station is shut up, but maybe there are survivors at Key's Station, or at least a way to the surface. Slowly, he crawls slowly, but then he hears a guttural, groaning sound. Ah, yes, the first undead. Oh, oh God. Here they are. A few stragglers that got caught behind as people fled towards Key Station. He fights them in the dark. Slow and steady, Kenny. Slow and steady. Oh my god, there's so many up there. Make a slow and bloody way along the tunnel. Alright, Kenny. <laughs> Let's just head back, quietly. And that's quite enough of that for now. Kenny returns to the safety of Emlyn Station, hands all shaky from fighting the dead in the dark tunnels. There's probably more to explore back here anyway that he ought to check out before he ventures any further. Huge store in here. Glad we came back upstairs, Kenny. Yes, he's glad he came back. This large storage room has some books in it to take with him. Even though he's stuck underground, he can still use the time to expand his mind. After packing up his suitcase with books and other useful items, he heads back to the locker room and settles down onto the bench to read a book and then fall asleep. He leaves the light on. 
There's a sofa right there, Kenny. That probably would have been more comfortable to sleep on, don't you think? Oh well. Kenny starts day number two by grazing from the convenience store. Food will likely be a big issue down here in the dark tunnels, especially in a few weeks' time. But for now, Kenny eats everything in sight. Or bag of tortilla chips. After breakfast, there's only one way to go. Into the underground. On the way, he swears he hears the sound of a howling wolf. Sound of a wolf? There's a wolf in here with me, Kenny? <laughs> okay, buddy. It's okay. Don't worry. Just a figment of your imagination. Then it's back into the tunnels for more slow, bloody work in the pitch black. Cockroach in his pocket. What could possibly go wrong? God, there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a door over there. Okay, Kenny, don't get overexcited. There's still a few here you need to take care of. Whoa, blinding light. He enters the strange back rooms of the underground. He's never been here before. Kenny quickly scrubs the gore splatter from his face in the sink. A little further down the tunnel, he walks past a collapsed elevator shaft full of mangled corpses. And in the next room, he finds a note from a long-gone Metro employee. All I ever wanted was to be a train driver. Now I'm stuck down here in the dark, tinkering with pipes. Bring on the end of the world. Kenny finds a few more batteries, absolutely essential, and makes his way up a small staircase. Just watch and wait for them to smash the glass, Kenny. Nice, good work. In the strange little office, he finds a blue key card. Okay. Then, further down the tunnel, he investigates more of the rooms, including this large canteen. Police officers. Two of them. Roll revolver and some bullets. There's a downed police officer here who's carrying a pistol. A terrible idea in the tunnels, Kenny. Don't you do it as well as a nightstick, a much more useful short blunt weapon. He checks out more rooms along the tunnel. Kenny has no idea where he is. It's like some sort of training facility with classrooms and canteens. Kenny is starting to get a little tired though, so he grabs a folding chair from the canteen and drags it into one of the cupboards. He moves a box in front of the door to hopefully keep the dead out. Hope you find some food soon. We really didn't bring very much with us. Could have been a mistake, Kenny. You've currently got half a bag of chips and some choco cakes to your name. Kenny takes off his hard hat and lets his lovely bold head breathe in the dead air and reads a book before collapsing into the folding chair. Good morning, rise and shine, Kenny, and your little pet cockroach. What should we call your cockroach, eh? What's a good name for a cockroach? I'm hoping that this room at the end, full of zombies, admittedly, has some food in. There's a fridge, so that is a good sign. Easily dealt with, Kenny. Easily dealt with. Ah, the telly's still on. You can learn how to do some cooking. Unfortunately, I think this is just going to make Kenny more hungry. It's all about how to make a salad. Mm, I have a feeling Kenny won't be eating any fresh food for a while. There is, in fact, some fresh food in the fridge. And Kenny shoves a tomato into his mouth and drools over the enormous pile of ice cream in the freezer. In one of the larger rooms, he finds another note. Bunch of damn scribblers, these employees. Pretty sure they just bring you down here to get acclimatized to the smell of the damp and the dark and the throbbing hum of the trains. Mm. It is an eerie place, isn't it, Kenny? Very strange. A key he found on one of the dead zombies in the canteen opens the door to the security center. He takes a peek downstairs, but he's peckish and there's no rush. There is no time at all down here in the tunnels. Kenny can take his sweet, lazy, lovely, non-existent time. As he munches on a bucket of ice cream, he has a brainwave. His cockroach, yes, his little friend and only companion in the dark. I know what call your cockroach. Call her Cindy, a lovely female companion in the underground tunnels. Someone who knows the tunnels very well, I imagine, actually, considering she is a cockroach. Just leave you there, don't move. Stay right where you are. It is a safe-ish place to stop and relax and watch life and living for free experience, read his books and fatten up a little bit with ice cream while he exercises. As he squats his backside into a beautiful round lump for Cindy the cockroach to enjoy, we'll take a look at his stats. 
Not entirely useless, but really quite useless. He does, however, have a few points in fitness and strength, but nothing at all in nimble, one of the most important combat stats in the game. Our lad Kenny is as nimble as a ball peen hammer. Ha <laughs> ball peen. He just loves saying those words. Tailoring. Will we ever find... Oh, hang on, I need to get Cindy. I left her over there by herself. I might be getting... I might be getting upset. Well, there you go, Cindy. He finds a crusty old frozen pork chop wedged in the back of the freezer. Kenny tries to microwave it, even though his wife's voice whispers in his ear. Don't eat that, Kenny, you stupid old shit. When it comes out looking pallid, grey, like a slab of dead feet meat, he decides not to eat it. Very wise, little Kenny. Mm, makes me feel bored and unhappy. Yeah, you really shouldn't eat, my, shouldn't eat that. After reading for a little while longer, it's time to take Cindy through to their honeymoon suite. Grab Cindy. We're going to go and find somewhere to spend the night. Well, this is a lovely room to sleep in, isn't it, Cindy? I'm just going to sit in it and I'm going to sleep in a plastic chair. In the morning of day four, Kenny eats ice cream for breakfast. There are still six or seven more tubs to go. Oh my God, where did I put Cindy? Cindy, I'm so sorry. Where is she? Oh, she's right there. She's in my pocket. Okay, thank God. Then he makes some plans for the day. Um, okay, so we're going to go and have a little look. After securing his cockroach package, he heads down through the security center and along a well-lit corridor. It leads him out to an alternative path to the route he'd first followed up there. So, changing tactics, he heads back to his main temporary base and down a staircase. This room is full of freezers, which are full of food. Kenny isn't sure why there's so much food down here, but he doesn't question it, not much. This is enough supplies to keep him going for at least a week or so. Oh my god, a banana. Yeah. Hell yeah. He pokes around a little bit here and there and opens this door, which leads him back to the dark tracks. Oh, okay. Kenny isn't ready yet, so he heads back to his home, his little camp in the office canteen. Oh, I keep panicking that I've lost Cindy. Oh, she's 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 right here. She's in my pocket, where she's always been. Let's do some more exercise as well, I think, my good friend. Exercise is the key to a successful life. Whether you're a human being or a mole rat, Kenny is a mix between the two. A subterranean little creature who collects cockroaches and names them after his favourite ladies. It doesn't take long to turn a little stir-crazy trapped in these lifeless tunnels. Really though, he just thinks about his predicament. He never wanted to die at work, but now it's even worse. He might have to live at work forever. Kenny reads, watches television and eats ice cream. Really, it could be a worse life. Carpentry Volume 2 is up next on his list of mind-expanding literature. Richie reads for a while and follows it up with some sit-ups. Kenny doesn't want to finish his books. When he's done, he knows he needs to push on further into the tunnels, searching desperately for a way out. After all, it's quite cosy in here, in his little cafeteria. If he could, he'd stay here forever. He reads, he eats ice cream, he sleeps with Cindy in the small bear office, propped up on an office chair. Day five is much the same for Kenny. He forestalls the inevitable reading and eating. After life and living is finished on the TV, he washes his clothes in the washer and washes himself in the sink. Wow, he's so smooth. He's such a smooth man. Such a smooth, rotund, elegant specimen. Kenny reads in his underwear, it's quite warm in the tunnels, then gets his clothes out of the dryer. They are crispy. Oh, so crispy. He slots two hammers into his belt. Two Hammer Kenny, Two Ham Ken, Ken with the two ball peens, the underground cowboy, doctor maintenance man. He exercise, he eat ice cream, he takes Cindy back to the honeymoon suite. Day six is a big day. Good morning, Kenny. How are you, buddy? I think today is the day we have to leave, my friend. He empties the fridge, leaving behind a single lime. Kenny fucking hates limes, and descends once again. Back into the tunnels. Kenny pops open this metal grate, exposing a maintenance road. It seems unlikely that he'll find a working vehicle down here. Anyone with any sense had driven out of there as soon as the news had come in from above ground. He is curious though, on the off chance there might be a truck. So he works his way up the tunnel, one zombie skull at a time. Eat some corn. Mm, delicious. Mm. 
Zombie by zombie, Kenny. Zombie by zombie. God, it's dark. The end of the tunnel is shut off and he checks this staircase. Maybe, maybe there's a way out. But, damn. No way out this, Kenny. No way out here. There's a door here, however. Maybe that's a security door there. We don't have the key card for yet. Okay, guess we're going back this way, Kenny. He makes his way back towards the rail tunnel. Skull by skull, he smashes his way up through the dark. As we go this way, Kenny. Slow and steady, Kenny. You brave little man. Get up, Kenny, get up. Oh, God. That was a close call, Kenny. Someone banging on the door. Eventually, he finds another exit door, and he climbs the staircase and flicks on his torch. The room is almost entirely empty, another weird limbo liminal space hidden in the dark tunnels. Kenny can't imagine what had happened in this room. The blood-splattered painting on the floor tells a strange story. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to sleep in here. He makes a nest on the floor of clothes and even puts Cindy on the side. Turns on the emergency broadcast to listen to the weather forecast. No use down here, of course. However, he's unable to sleep. Not tired enough to snuggle up on the wooden floor. So he pushes on a little further in the hopes he finds somewhere else up the tunnel. Get up, Kenny. That doesn't go to plan, so he takes the long walk back all the way to the cafeteria. Turn to our little nest one last time. He rests. In the morning, he's awoken by a dead man's watch with an alarm set for 1.40am. That's okay, Kenny is rested enough. He grabs his suitcase and heads back into the tunnel. Oh, I shouted. Kenny! You shouted by accident. Oh my god. Sound's gonna echo down the corridors. In a moment of total madness, Kenny yells, I'm Kenny fucking Dietz, at the top of his lungs into the vast tunnel. As expected, progress along the tunnel is slow. For every zombie he kills in the darkness, another two linger up ahead. Okay, Kenny, why did you shout? <laughs> oh, Kenny. It's the third time you've been knocked over now. After another morning of fighting in the dark, he returns to his comfortable canteen, stopping to drink a whole carton of milk on the way. He rests again in the chair sleeping at six in the morning. Time has no meaning. He wakes on the same day and continues his trek in the tunnel. Come on, Cindy, let's go. Today we're gonna reach the next station. I'm thinking if we look at the map here, it should take us to here. Okay, stay calm. Ah, lights. Oh my god. Lights and a lot of zombies. Oh boy, okay. Eventually, as we tick over into day number eight, after many, many zombies killed, Kenny spies light on the horizon. Unfortunately, with a new station come many, 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 many more zombies. Kenny gets to killing them, of course. No. Oh God. It's so dark, I can't see what I'm doing. It's not a bite, it's just a scratch. Oh God. Also not my swinging arm, which is good. Yes, our first little scratch, the first proper run-in with deaths for Ken Meister. Thankfully, the gracious egg shines upon us this day, and tis but a scratch. 
Oh boy, but the light there on the horizon, that's your goal, wee Kenny. Strive, push on, defeat the undead horde. Things start to get a little hectic in the tunnel. Okay, 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 okay. Why? Ah. Okay. After those close calls, Kenny once again returns to the safety of the canteen. Back to home sweet home. Kind of. Not really. Have a big bottle of orange soda and calm down, Kenny. God damn, Kenny. Put Cindy down on the table. Don't forget Cindy in the morning, Kenny. Get some rest. Three hours later, after a short nap, Kenny is back at it, killing as many zombies as he can. To forego yet another musical montage, he clears out the tunnel. Look at all those corpses. Damn, Kenny knew this man. Not by name, but by face. And finds another door he can pry open with his trusty crowbar. There are more zombies to kill inside. Again, I won't show you these. Just imagine Kenny slamming his hammer into their heads. And he explores a little further. Damn, sounds like there could be a few behind there, Kenny. Oh. Yep, there's a few. Zombies pile onto him. He kills them. He explores. He finds more zombies. He kills them. Eventually, while trying to clear the corridor onwards, his arm begins to ache, and he has to make a retreat back into the tunnels. After killing those zombies who followed him, he's able to rest on a bench for a moment, then make his way back down the corridor. Wait. The zombie spoke. Just a bad dream. Don't listen to the voices, Kenny. The zombies talk? Kenny must be going mad. He pushes onwards regardless. It's just the lack of sleep, of proper rest, of real vegetables, of sunlight. Or it might be the huge piles of sopping gore and blood everywhere. It's starting to send him loopy. Can he be blamed? Of course not, viewer. On the fight goes right into the next morning. And even as he kills dozens of zombies, another peek up the corridor and... Oh my god. He can't deal with that right now. Not without sleep. He picks up and drags one of the station benches along the tunnel and returns to the small strange room with the blood splattered painting. Kenny starts to get comfy but realises he's only carrying a single carton of milk and all the slaughter has made him a very hungry Kenny. He returns once again to the cosy cafeteria. Yeah, there's a bunch of food here. And he's just got an, uh, a suitcase full of ice cream. I'm sweet home again. I'm sorry, little dude. You can't stay there forever, even though you yearn for it. Today we make progress. Hey, Cindy. I'm telling you. Kenny Deets. Kenny Deets. My boy, Kenny Deets. Come on. We got this. It's all we need, Kenny Deets. My boy, Kenny Deets. A few hours later, after a little rest on the fold-up chair, Kenny is up and feeling revitalised. After shouting at his pet cockroach, Cindy, he heads out again on a mission. Try and worm our way in here, my friend, I think. He returns to the open door and begins another slaughter. So repeats the process. He kills zombies, leads them into the tunnel when he needs a break, kills more, rests on the bench and returns to slaughter even more zombies. The corridor slowly piles up with the bodies of the dead. The stench is unbelievable, like a thousand rotting lasagnas. I like those sunglasses. Wearing sunglasses in the dark in a subway tunnel? That's our Kenny Deeds. My god, they just keep coming. Oh boy, have half a pepper. Eat it like an apple, little Kenny Deeds. And we'll rest again. Look at this chaos you've caused, Kenny Deeds. And yet there are still more zombies. Now, what's down here? Ah, it's actually safe, I think. Hey, that's nice to know. You've killed 316 zombies already, Kenny Deets, my boy. On the teetering edge of day 10, Kenny sets up one of the station benches in the relatively safe corridor. He can sleep here for now. Just to protect his dwindling sanity, he drags a few corpses out of his new bedroom. Eat the rest of this bell pepper, in the hopes that today we find some more food somewhere. There are zombies everywhere he turns. Hey, stop that. Oh god. Oh boy. What are these eerie, eerie, eerie spaces? Down this dark corridor he hears them grumbling and moaning. 
He ducks, he weaves, he slays them all, and of course he stops to take a long, gulping sip from an apocalypse toilet. A fine vintage. The zombies clearly do not take kindly to drinking from their toilet. There's a nomad there, which is really good, because he should have some food on him. Never leave zombies at your back, Kenny. My god, my heart. Oh my god, there's a helicopter. Just when he thinks it can't get any worse, a helicopter roars somewhere overhead. A helicopter down here. That's no helicopter, Kenny. You're hearing things. The problem is the zombies can hear it too. What sort of twisted nightmare is this? Does that work down here? Oh my god, I really hope not. Yes, it does. Oh no. Oh no. Typical Kenny behaviour. As the zombies shuffle towards him down the dark tunnel, he stops and eats an entire stick of butter he'd found on that dead nomad zombie. If that guy had got into the tunnels, surely Kenny can get out? The helicopter disappears overhead, the ringing stops in his ears, and Kenny can proceed slowly, carefully back down his tunnel. Ah. He bashes his way through the zombie crowds with his nightstick, takes a peek upstairs, Oh my god. Oh my god, that's a lot. Absolutely not, no way, not yet. Kenny hates stairs, so he tries the other corridor instead. There's a lot down here too. Coming down the stairs behind me. Nope, 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 nope. It doesn't look any more promising. One of the zombies that shuffles out of some dark hole is wearing a school bag, which Kenny promptly pulls on and starts moving his items from the suitcase. Move everything over from the suitcase to this new school bag we found. And in the silence, I can just hear so many zombies. Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention. Ah! God, the reactions on that. I wish you'd been able to see my hands on the keyboard. Sorry, Kenny, mate. I wasn't paying attention. What the hell? Where did you all come from? Zombies keep crawling out of the woodwork from god knows where, so he decides to clear out one of the side tunnels. Where did this guy come from behind me? Thought it was clear back here. There isn't much down here, although it's interesting nonetheless. There's more tunnels. Okay, now we can drop our suitcase, which means we can carry our torch at the same time. Ventilation shaft of some description, I think. Lights at the other end. Then he tries to clear out the corridor under the stairs. The room at the end is under construction. Oh my god. And the light flickers between the unfinished walls. It's a lucky hit, that is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> this is chaos, Kenny. Absolute chaos. Right, Kenny, it is utter chaos down here in the tight corridors. He returns to his sleeping bench for a small rest and eats a handful of sunflower seeds. He rests for a moment, kills a few more zombies, and then goes back to the bench to sleep when he begins to get tired. And let's get some rest. In the morning, we'll eat the rest of our cheese, Kenny. Zombie cheese, delicious zombie cheese. And let's head out for another day of slaughtering. 395 zombies killed. On the next day, it's much the same. Slow, tricky progress around the staircase and corridor. He does eventually make his way into the unfinished rooms. But things start to go badly wrong. Where are we even? Oh god. Why there's so many? Oh god. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, Kenny. Oh my god. How did we just make it out of that alive? That was insane. He's still alive somehow. A moment of pure dumb luck. The zombies must have come from upstairs as it's now relatively clear. Kenny explores, slowly and carefully, of course. There's a small canteen here. Oh, another canteen to call home. Kenny, he does love a canteen. With a can opener and a couple of fridges with some supplies in. Across the hallway is a small office unit which he clears. Afraid that zombies might creep up behind him, he puts a small cardboard box in front of the door. I'm not sure what you're hoping that will achieve, Kenny, but whatever floats your boat, little man. It's clear that this is Key Station, a large, empty station foyer plunged into darkness. He gets to clearing it out, zombie by zombie. Oh my god. Oh my god, there's a lot in there. You mother. Kenny the Ruthless, King of the Underground. The station, however, is absolutely teeming with the undead. This is going to be a serious mission. Oh my god. But if Kenny has one thing, he has time. All the time in the world in this timeless dark pit he is trapped in. First of all, he needs to secure an anchoring spot. So he drags a couple of these metal cabinets into the canteen to block the door while he sleeps. He gets his bearings and yoinks a camping bed from this makeshift area. With the bed secured, he can use the cabinets to block the door, hopefully keeping him slave. Slave. At 12am, he walks slowly towards his doom in Key Station. Or will he manage to clear the entire place, zombie by zombie? He siphons off the larger group into smaller groups, making them easier to handle. It's using this method that Kenny will hopefully clear the entire station. Hell yeah, Kenny Deets! My boy! Maybe there's a way out here, Kenny. Up these stairs. Kenny stares into the twisted faces of the dead behind the shop grate. He has to do this funny little dance on the door to slowly pull them out. Oh, careful, Kenny. But he gets a little tired doing that dance, so he pops back to the camp for a snack and a rest. Okay, had a little snack of some ice cream, took a little rest on his bed. Then it's back out again to deal with the rest of them. He wants to get into the shop, of course. Oh, the epic battle for the convenience shop here. A shop means food. Ah, oh, we did it. Eventually, Kenny is victorious, and he gets his ultimate prize. Egg. With that clear, he heads down the corridor towards the escalators. Maybe there's a way out. He would love to take a gulp of fresh air. Unfortunately, there are only zombies. Or not. Could just be a lot of zombies instead. A lot of zombies. He makes a retreat into the main foyer. It's not too many. I thought there was more than that. After dealing with that shite show, he's tired again, so he goes back to his canteen home, drags the cabinet across the door, and sleeps. Come on, Cindy. I'm still alive, Cindy. Somehow, I am still alive. I'm gonna cook a delicious sausage, Kenny. Underground sausage. Mmm. Delicious. He cooks a sausage and stares into the oven as it cooks. The skin sizzles and crisps up, and he is immensely hungry. Kenny lays down on the camp bed and snuffles the sausage down. Ah, it's not so bad, is it? He wakes up at 20 to 10 in the evening and heads to the convenience store to get snacks for breakfast. We have a look down here. Maybe there's a way out. Maybe they didn't block this, block these staircases off. Oh my god. Oh, there's a lot of zombies up there still. 
Oh boy. Okay. Take another peek. Oh, I hate stairs. In the end, the battle for the escalators is pointless. No. No. Completely shut in, Kenny. Oh no, Kenny! So, Kenny heads deeper into Key Station. Mm. Sounds like there's a lot behind that. Great, Kenny. Back up, back up, back up. Oh, yep, yeah, that's a lot of them. Oh my god. At 2.30 a.m. after all that fighting, he returns to have another quick nap on the camp bed. The hazmat suited zombie has a large backpack on, a big upgrade on his small school bag. On he goes, one zombie at a time, deeper into the station. Oh my god. That's a lot of goddamn zombies. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. Okay, a little bit exhausted. Our battery is running a little low on our torch, so let's just, um... Back up for a moment. You motherfucker. It's just another scratch. Just another scratch. Left arm again. It's just another scratch. Starting to feel a little sick from all the corpses as well. Penny is beginning to fall foul of corpse sickness. It's no surprise the tunnels are now full of the rotting dead. Yeah, they've ripped straight through my denim shirt. He heads back to the canteen camp for a quick break. Back he goes to the area that's full of zombies, but decides that finding a mask is more important. That's a lot of zombies. He remembers the nomad he'd previously killed in the tunnel downstairs had a large gas mask on, perfect for keeping out the fumes of rotting corpses. He heads into the tunnel of death to find it. Armed with his new gas mask, he heads back to continue killing zombies. Nice and slowly, Kenny. Nice and slowly. Nice reactions, Kenny. Kenny sneaks down a corridor past a shop full of shuffling dead and finds another set of escalators. But unfortunately, it's another dead end. None of the lifts are working. He is, of course, trapped. Defeated by the prospect of spending even more days in these hellish tunnels, he heads back to the canteen camp and gets some rest. Morning, Cindy. You doing okay? Just chilling out by the sink, are you? Okay, out we go again. After kissing Cindy the cockroach good morning, he takes a look down at the tracks. Swarming with zombies, he is surrounded on all sides, but he will persevere. Kenny slaughters more zombies. So scared about going through that door. I don't even think I will. Oh shit. Okay, 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 okay. Then he returns to his camp to lay out his collection of lovely new items for Cindy, his cockroach mistress. Return to the safety of our little cafeteria, Kenny. We also have some special new gifts. A 
table full of bras. Different colours and types, Kenny. Then he gets some rest. Okay, might as well get a little rest. Tomorrow we're going to move all the food over from the other shop to our little temporary base here. Tomorrow, today. Time has no meaning, Kenny. You're like a little naked mole rat down here. At 1am on the next morning, he rearranges some of the lamps to bring more light into the central area. It's a good time to tell you that Kenny is actually terrified of the dark. Poor lad. It's also time to make his camp a little more homely, so he fills his backpack with the snacks from the shop and even collects this lovely rug to take back with him. Very important for our sanity, little Kenny, that we decorate your home, okay? Lovely. Getting cosier by the day. Right then. Housekeeping can't go on forever. He still needs to escape, and he'll eventually run out of food if he doesn't press onwards. So on he goes. Let's go and see what we can achieve. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen. Okay, well handled, Kenny, well handled. Take a bra for our troubles. Better collect all the bras. Strapless bra, yes, please. My god, there's just so many. Horrific. Horrendous. Horrible, Kenny, horrible. Back up and take a rest for a moment, Kenny. Fruit muffin, chocolate. Oh my god, I think the power just went off. Oh no. As he's smashing zombies to pieces, something truly awful happens. The power goes off in the station. It is pitch black. The electrical, comforting hum of devices and fridges and lights snaps off in an instant. Kenny is completely alone. Abandoned. Trapped. In a dying world. It did. The power did go off. Which means all we have left, Kenny, are these thin slivers of light that come from above. And any batteries that we have left in our torch. But he pushes on, killing zombies in the pitch black, because this is Kenny Dietz, and he is not dying here. His canteen camp doesn't feel so welcoming in the dark. You okay in there, Cindy? I can barely see you, it's so dark, but I did bring you some more underwear. I'll put them on the table here for you, don't worry. Very dark, isn't it, Cindy? Don't know how long all this fresh food is going to last, so we're trying to eat as much of it as we can. Whole jar of mayonnaise? Absolutely. After that brief rest stop, he leaves once more. He won't let the power shutting off get in his way. Kenny is on the path to freedom. He will see the light of day. Once again, he will find his friends, his family, anyone else. But first, he just needs to clear up this station. Bras, more bras. Kenny hoovers up the bras from the zombies and then Leroy Jenkins himself into the shop. Whoa. Kenny, what a crazy decision. I respect it massively, big man. He just charged right in there. This does at least allow him to collect enough food for a few more weeks underground. Collect more bras. So many bras. Cindy, I brought you more bras. Of course, you are only a cockroach, so you cannot wear them. He returns to the camp, walking with his torch through the dead station. Kenny falls asleep. When he wakes up, it is immensely bright. Ah, the power is back. The emergency generator must have kicked in for the station. Even though the lights are back on, Kenny is still slipping into madness. He picks up Cindy the cockroach, who may very well be dead by now, it's hard to tell, and puts her next to the growing collection of bras. Just read this magazine. How to make a shield belt short sheath. 
Left leg pouch, red leg pouch, plated scrap kit. And once more into the tunnel, Kenny Dietz. Oh my god, there's just so many in there. Stop for a little snack of beef jerky, Kenny. The slaughter continues for hours, and yet there are still hundreds of zombies behind the grates and along corridors. God, they are everywhere. Progress is grinding to a complete standstill, and Kenny is starting to see things, hear voices, visions in the dark. The hell? Zombie was laughing over there. Yeah, no thanks, man. Appears to be some sort of medical center, I think. Hard to tell from here, but we'll have a little look. Oh my god. Okay, Kenny, back up, 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 back up. Kenny just says no thank you to that massive horde and heads back to camp, collecting a light on the way. So many zombies underneath me. I hear them growling and gurgling down there. He can also hear the zombies underneath his feet, where the train tunnel runs underneath the station. Back at camp, he tries some cooking to steady his nerves. Broccoli, egg, and beef jerky stir-fry with a little bit of lime. Sounds pretty good, Kenny, considering you're trapped in a tunnel underground. There we go, Cindy. I brought you some more bras. Now it's time for rest, Kenny. After sleep, he heads back down towards the medical center and begins the process of clearing out the dead. With a few zombies destroyed, he investigates some of the surgery rooms. They each have a fridge in with some food, which is odd. Who's eating cherries while getting their doctor checkup? And plenty of drugs and medical supplies, which makes more sense. Medical supplies should be useful. Tweezers, such a needle. Hopefully we never need them. Kenny's life enters a period of simplicity. Kill zombies, loot, return to the camp. Kill zombies, loot, return to the camp. It's in this mindless activity that Kenny's brain begins to truly slip into a pit of insanity. Oh, sorry, Cindy, I sat on you. You're just going to crawl around on my butt cheeks. I guess that's fine. Let's drink a beer while Cindy navigates Kenny's behind. Good night, mate. Still okay, Cindy? Yeah, she's fine. He sleeps on the camp bed and wakes up at 2pm and immediately goes back to the medical centre. Nice, the numbers have thinned out considerably. Keep them coming. Avocado. Cheese is still fresh, so we'll eat the cheese. Avocado is stale, but we might be able to make something with that. Got crammed in that cupboard. Hmm. Horrible. Horrible squirming, wriggling, festering flesh. Just as he's admiring the zombie whirlpool behind the grate, an absolute truckload of festering corpses come shuffling out of a door. And Kenny's on the back pedal again. He deals with them relatively comfortably, including this sweet move he calls the door move because he has the creative nuance of a dead cockroach. He slays zombies until he's sleepy again, grabs this poster, E and heads back to the canteen home he calls home. Home. Mmm, yummy. While he sleeps, he dreams of making some improvements to his canteen. So he heads downstairs to hunt for a saw. It doesn't take him very long to find one. Kenny also carries this set of floodlights upstairs to put in the centre of the station. Slowly by slowly, he stays off the darkness one lamp at a time. He cooks another meal and then falls asleep again. Kenny is restless. Good morning, Kenny. Or good evening, or good afternoon. It's kind of hard to say, to be honest, isn't it? When he wakes up, he grabs this dead plant and puts it down in his room. Oh, so lovely, Kenny. Yeah, really lovely, that. Then housekeeping is done for the day. He kills a few zombies from the rail tunnel, then proceeds towards the medical centre. He has no real purpose or goal other than to kill the zombies and eventually escape this hellhole. So many close calls, Kenny. Okay. Yep. Should have cleared that way before I came in there. You gotta learn from your mistakes, Ken Dog. 
It doesn't take long for Kenny to become immoderately exerted again, so he just heads back to the canteen. This is a further demonstration of Kenny's deteriorating mental state. Hello, Cindy. He's feeling a little sad. We can fix that up, I think. In a hopeless battle to bring some sanity to the dead tunnels, he cooks another meal. After resting with a lovely full stomach of eggs, he heads back towards the medical centre, but this time opts for the buffet. The process is much the same, dark and weave and kill zombies, humming a little tune to himself. Kenny has completely disassociated. Oh boy. Come yeah, on then. Bloody idiots. Look what they've got here in these cupboards. Anything good? Fruit jam. Perfect. Yep, okay. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh, there was light. Eventually, he clears out enough zombies to be able to turn the light on. It is gloriously bright, and for a moment, Kenny feels like a human being again. I think there was a lady here dressed as an Amazonian warrior. There was. She dropped some fish and eggs. Where did you get these from, lady? So I'm not going to ask um, too much. I'm just going to take them. Maybe she'd be fishing in the sewer or something like that. Can have that can of evaporated milk. Right now, buddy, as a reward for doing so brilliantly today. It was a successful trip into the buffet with plenty of cans and other goodies to return to the canteen camp with. While sorting his inventory, Kenny is sure he can hear voices shuffling. There's nothing there, Kenny. Nothing there. Not yet, anyway. Not yet, friend. Did you hear something, Kenny? He does some exercise to exorcise the ghouls in his mind and falls asleep. Get some rest. He heads out to begin collecting lamps from dead ends in the tunnels, thinking that the darkness is really starting to get to him. If he can just make it brighter, maybe he'll be okay. As he's organising, he hears something in the corridor. He broke down my barricade. Stab you to death with my screwdriver. To take his mind off things just a little more, Kenny does a bit of carpentry, disassembling furniture and cabinets for planks and nails. He eats some honey pancakes from that weird lady from the tunnel, puts up another lamp outside his door and pulls apart more furniture. All the while he can hear the voices and the shuffling and the strange gurgling sounds, but where from? There are no zombies nearby. After a few busy hours, he gets some rest. Back out on the old grind, Kenny. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Relax, 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 relax. Relax, relax. We found a friend. Cindy. The battle for the buffet was worth it in the end. We find a cockroach partner for Cindy, this one is still alive, as well as lots of ice cream and canned food. It's enough food for Kenny to live for a long time. He investigates this large corridor, though the end is infested with zombies. Oh man, this goes on and on, doesn't it? Don't like fighting in this corridor, I know it's clear behind me, but do I know? I do know. It's okay Kenny, there's no one behind you. Got the door just bashed open. Kenny slowly bashes his way through until he finds a large warehouse type area at the end. The fighting goes on for many hours. It is utter bloodshed. Exit. Is this the way out, Kenny? Could be. Could be, could be, could be. Pop some pills, my friend. 
Eventually it's clear enough and Kenny can activate the large breaker to turn on the lights. He checks the exit. It is, of course, locked. Kenny feels complete despair. Look, Cindy. Got you a friend. Two cockroaches and a table full of bras. He returns to his small canteen camp and introduces the other cockroach to Cindy. He does some organising and begins to make plans for the future. He uses to keep notes. Propane. We need weapons. Food. It's all pretty simple goals. You can see some of the map here, but it doesn't seem to give us a clear layout. Anyway, Kenny's going to get some rest. Good night, mate. The whole time, the sound of gurgling and muttering, the voices and the shambling dead fill his head. He tries not to think about it. He tries to distract himself by making plans for the future. And then he rests, and he stirs in the night. He hears a creaking sound, and then chaos. The ceiling had fallen inwards, creating a disgusting tidal wave of zombie flesh that fell onto Kenny's head. They instantly rip him apart. What a way to go. Of course, my lovely little eggs, that's not exactly what happened here. Project Underground is still in its alpha stages, so some bugs like this are to be expected. I closed the game, reopened it, and when I came back, the room was full of zombies and Kenny was eaten. He was dead. Deaded. Completely dead. There was no time to save him. Poor old guy. He was really getting started there and it's a bit of a shame, but this is what happens when you fiddle around with brand new map mods. I hope you still enjoyed the truncated movie. We'll be back with another one soon. Some small tips. Tips? Tips and hints about what's next coming up on the Discord, which you can join from my channel. And I'll probably also make some community posts about it too. So I'll see you then. Goodbye, my little eggs.